Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. This video is long overdue because I get asked so many questions about what I use and how I print my photos at home, so I'm going to break it down for you. We're going to look at the equipment, the app I use, the cost per print, and then I'm even going to go into some of the creative process and how I decide what size to print my photos, so stay tuned for that. So I've been printing my photos from home for a long, long time. I'm currently using the Epson Picture Mate 400. I highly recommend this printer. I have had multiple Epson printers and Canon printers. I've even had an HP, don't recommend HP, but for photos. But the Canon was fantastic as far as quality, but I prefer Epson because I feel like my printers last longer. I, they, I get a longer life and have less issues with my Epson printers and the quality's great. So to me, that's a win-win. Um, this one I got on Amazon for two, it was $1.99 when I purchased mine a couple years ago. It is now $2.49 still definitely worth that price. It prints up to five by seven. I know many, many, many fellow crafters that use this. In fact, this video is a collaboration with my friend Jama Malmi. If you haven't checked her video out, I'll leave it in the description box below. She also uses the Epson Picture Mate printer, but she uses a little bit different method than I do for printing her photos. So you're going to want to check that out for even more tips and, you know, different ideas to try. As I mentioned, this does print up to a five by seven. Here's a four by six sheet of paper and you can just adjust the arm here to you know secure whatever size paper so you can print smaller you can print you know down to a three and a half by five but you can even print smaller photos than that using the app that i'm about to share with you this is the ink cartridge i get this on amazon and it is 32.99 so 33 dollars and it has been that price for quite some time i know prices on amazon can fluctuate but the paper i recommend this is a hundred sheets of paper and the four by six, I like to use the premium photo paper glossy. There's different um, quality you can purchase, but you guys, this is not an area you want to skimp on. You know, we want these photos to last. We want these scrapbooks to last and be passed on to future generations. So I don't recommend buying cheap paper. So there is even one ultra premium photo paper glossy, but I have been using the premium and really like it. I like the glossy. I believe there's a matte as well, but there's a hundred sheets in here. You can buy eight by tens. You can buy five by sevens. So I have eight by tens and then I can cut those down if I need to do a five by seven, just because I used to have a large format printer. This on Amazon is $7 and 30 cents at Staples. Just the other day, my local Staples, it was $18 and I showed them what it was on Amazon and they price match. So that was really cool. So check with your store if you need it ASAP and don't want to order it and maybe they'll price match as well. So before we get into how I print my photos, I get asked a lot the cost per print. So I, for quite some time, did tally marks for every four by six I printed. I would Put down a tally mark. Now, when I say four by six, that's a four by six sheet. So I may have two photos or multiple smaller photos on this four by six, and I would count that as one four by six print. So if you're printing smaller photos, you know, you're actually going to get more prints. So just to keep it consistent, we're referring to four by six prints, and I would consistently get about 95 prints before I would run out of ink. Now, if you print a lot of photos at once, you're going to get more. If you wait long periods of time in between prints, you're going to get less because dust and the ink drying up over time, those things will affect it. But I print pretty consistently and tend to get about 95 four by six prints. So that works out to about 42 cents per four by six print. Now, is this the least expensive method for printing your photos? No, probably not. But I think I spend a lot less money in the long run because I only print what I scrapbook. Back in the day when I first started scrapbooking, I have this creative memories box and I have even more boxes, but I would just print all these photos. Oh yeah, look at that gem. 1995 Motherload Fair. That was my FFA project lamb there. But the point of showing you guys this is that I have all of these photos that I paid money to print 
and never scrapbooked because they were either, you know, kind of a duplicate, like you have several shots of the same photo, or maybe they just weren't that great. But at the time, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to scrapbook. So I would just send everything off, have it all developed, and then have all these photos. And then I would only actually scrapbook the best ones and I can't bear to throw them away so then I have all of these photos that I'm storing in my house or taking up room nobody comes back and looks at these because like I said the story highlights of the memory are in the album so these are just extra photos I, I will be scrapbooking that one though I'm glad I opened this and that reminded me so you know I definitely think that you save money when you only scrapbook what is actually going in in the album. So I use an app called Printasize. I'm going to just tap on that and open it up and you can see it gives me a blank 4x6 canvas. There is a little cog or wheel down in the lower left corner. So just tap on that and then we have options. Here I can alter my or adjust my paper size. So these are my recents. You do have all of these different sizes to choose from. Now keep in mind that the Epson Picture Mate, you know, only goes up to a 5 by 7. So you cannot print a eight and a half by 11 in that printer. So I'm going to keep it on four by six and then you can change orientation from portrait to landscape or automatic and you can change the measurements, centimeters, millimeters, or inches. So now it'll automatically just default to whatever settings. You don't have to change it every time. Down here is a plus sign, and that's how we're going to add our photo. So just tap that and it pulls up my camera roll. So if I were printing a photo I just took, I can tap on the camera roll and it would be very easy to find. Now if this, you know, I have thousands of photos in my camera roll here. So if it was something I took a year ago, I would not want to take the time to scroll through here and find that. So I organize them in micro categories under albums, and then we can just scroll through, find the, you know, album we want. Here's a recent trip I took to Maui. So all those photos from that vacation are in this uh, album. So it's super easy to find. Let's just go ahead and use this one for an example. So I've tapped on it and I'm going to click add and it drops it right into my four by six canvas. So what I like to do is put it up in the upper corner here. Now I like to have a white border around my photos. So this, you know, can do that for you. I'm um, just, you know, it's going to print how you line it up. So I'm dragging it. Now, when you take a picture with your phone, it's not actually a true four by six. So that, you know, ratio is slightly off, but I can still make this a four by six. I'm just going to tap on it. See how when I tap on it, we get this little menu bar up top and also our little measurement points. So I'm just going to drag this down. And now I have my four by six with my white border. I love the way the white border looks. It's super clean and it's one less thing I have to do. I don't have to mat it on white paper, which, you know, reduces the materials, reduces the bulk in my layout. It's just a win-win for me. So from here, you can do all sorts of things. If you tap on it and pull up this little bar, click the arrow, you can flip it. So now I'm looking to the left rather than the right. Let's say I don't like that. There's a little undo button down here. You just click it and it will undo whatever you just did. Now you can also crop photos on here as well. So there's quite a bit of ocean around me. And let's say you want to zoom in on the subject. So tap it. You're going to hit that crop button and then you can easily just zoom in just like that. Now here's a little extra tip for you. So you want to consider the rule of thirds. Imagine a tic-tac-toe grid over your photo. You have two lines running horizontal and two lines running vertical making that grid. You want your subject on one third of the, you know, just on that one third line. So if you were to put me right smack in the middle, it's not going to look as good as if we're in the one third, you know, line of this photo. And also just to take it a step farther, I'm looking this way. So if you were to put me all the way over on this line, on this third, there's nowhere for me to go. I'm like cramped, it's awkward, I need space to breathe. So it's much better to have the subject, you know, with room in front of them. They're, you know, some, it's just, like I said, it's somewhere for the subject to go and it's just more visually appealing. So another thing we can do is crop into odd sizes. So let's say you want to do like strips of photos, have really narrow strips 
going all the way across your layout. So you could print something like that. Let's say you wanted a square. So that is super easy to do as well. So we're just gonna take this down into a square here and slide it and there we go. So now we have our square. And again, there's a little bit of material wasted. Um, you can play with, you know, a five by seven format and put different, lots of multiple photos on there and play with it that way. I'm okay with losing a little bit of paper. It's, you know, it's okay. So, you know, here we have our square photo as well. So lots of different things you can do. So I do want to show you, I created this layout very recently here on my channel and they have, all, you know, I was documenting what I'm currently reading. So I printed out all these cute little books. I screenshot them off of Amazon. So they were on my phone and then use the print to size app to print them out in these little mini forms. So let me show you how I did that. Now, before I put them into my app to print, I wanna show you how easy it is to put them into an album. So I'm in my camera roll. Now those were recently dropped in, but you know, we'll just show you real quick. So I hit the select, click your books, and then the square with the arrow, add to album, and then you can add a new album. I always have photos to print, so we're gonna drop them into there, and they're ready to go. So now we go back to our app. We're gonna click the arrow, click on albums, photos to print, and there they are. So all four, click add, and it drops them all into my album. So now we just click on them and we're going to shrink them down. I printed these to about two by five by 1.6. So we'll just repeat that with each one of them. Whoops, a little too far. And then line them up and we'll print them all at once. Makes it super convenient and easy to do. And I just love the flexibility of this. I know I keep saying that, but it's so easy to use. And it's just a one-time you know, purchase. You don't have to, there's no in-app purchases. So I know that's nice because sometimes they'll get you with that one. Okay, so we have these ready to go. They're all the same size. And I'm gonna click the little print icon. I'm not actually going to print these because I don't need them, but I'll walk you through the process. So click on the print icon. It, if whatever printers you have connected, they'll list be listed here. You can print to multiple printers. So I have my Epson PictureMate 400 and you also can change the mode. So color photo is gonna be your best quality. We have color general, uh, photo grayscale. So you'll get a black and white and then grayscale general. So we're gonna do color photo. And then you can also export as a PDF, export as a JPEG or save for later. So if you're at work on your lunch break and playing around with photos, you can save those for later and print them when you get home. So then you just hit that print uh, button there and it's gonna print it right out. So um, again, I'm not gonna do that because I already have them on my layout here, but I just wanted to show you how easy that is to do. I do have the app store open here. I wanna show you what this looks like. It's you know, print to size, true scale photo printer. And you'll see there, there's 12,000 reviews and it has a five star rating. That is awesome. And I found out about this app from the Scrappy Wife and I have heard several other crafty YouTubers using it as well. So highly recommend it. There's no in-app purchases or anything like that. So keep that in mind. And now I do wanna go into a little bit about how I plan my photo sizing for my layout so I know what size to print them before I even get started. Before I give you a few tips on photo sizing, I do wanna mention you probably noticed I'm an iPhone user, so this app is iPhone friendly. So I have heard from one person, they tried to get it, they're an Android user and it wasn't working, they couldn't get it to work. But I did quite a bit of research before this video and it does say there is the print to size app option for Android users. So that should be available to you guys. So, um, you know, I can't test that. Obviously, I don't have access to an Android, but you know, from what I read on Google, it looks like it's legit and an option for both phones, which is awesome. So I have a video here on my channel where I actually was working with a pre-designed workshop, but my photos were not the same orientation as the pre-designed layout. So I use these photo place card holders to test out some different adaptations and options before printing my photos. And I'll leave that listed 
um, in the end screen here for you guys to check out after you finish this video. But basically, Close to My Heart has these photo place card holders that they put in their workshop. So if you don't have your pictures, you just put these where the photos would go and then add your pictures later. So it says place photo here. It's a three by four in landscape mode. And then you flip it over. It's in portrait mode. You don't have to have these. You can just cut paper to make that work. But since I, you know, have them from the workshops, they are a pretty handy little tool cool. So the very first thing I do is I look at how many photos I have to print. If I have, you know, three or less photos, it's going to be a single page layout. If I have four or more, it's going to be a double page layout. Typically, there are a few exceptions. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at my photos on my phone and I see, okay, yes, I'll, I'll mark all the ones I want to scrapbook on the layout as a favorite. So then once I have that, I can say, you know, okay, I have this one page picture that's like my favorite picture out of all of them. I definitely want it to be the focal photo and it's, you know, a landscape mode. So I would just think to myself, I'm going to make that a four by six and then I'm going to add in the, you know, supporting photos from the story. So let's say we can do some three by fours. One of them's landscape and one of them's in portrait mode. So I might try something like that. But then I wonder, okay, can I crop it down into a square? Because oftentimes there's wasted, you know, unimportant things in the photo that can be cropped out. So you could crop this down to a square and do something like that. Now I've been scrapbooking a very long time, so this is a skill that comes, you know, with practice, but you, you know, I would just start seeing things in my mind thinking, okay, I could put a title here. I can use this spot for journaling or embellishments. I could put embellishments here and put some journaling underneath, um, you know, or if I had it back where it was to begin with, I could put my same thing. You know, I have this open spot here and I can just start to kind of visualize. Now, if you, if that doesn't come naturally to you, start with a sketch, find an inspiration layout on Pinterest or Instagram and use that to, you know, be, act as your jumping off point and, you know, work from there, making adaptations to work for what you have on hand. So typically I would never, if I had three, four by six photos, I, you know, would want to cut them down because I like a little bit of space around my photos. So let's say I'm doing a, a linear layout like this. I would definitely want some space between those. So I know I would print those photos to like a three and a half by five. And that's going to give me some space in between because you can't always cut down a photo depending on how the photographer has taken the photo, you may not be able to crop it, but printing it smaller preserves the ratio of the photo and gives you more options. Hopefully that makes sense. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'd love to hear how you guys um, do it at home. If you print your photos or if you send off for them or you know what you are currently using. I also want to mention that fellow creative design team member Katie did a video earlier this week on her channel feature featuring PicMonkey and how she uses it to print from her computer. So I'll leave that listed in the description box below for you to check out. But be sure to watch this video right here and it will give you a closer walk up of how I take actual photos and a sketch with pictures on it pre-designed and use these to make some adaptations. And hopefully that'll give you a little clearer picture of how I do that process. Thanks so much for watching guys. Give this video a big thumbs up and I will catch you next time. Bye.